Hey there, everyone. Today I'm going to walk you through my development budget cash flow distribution module. Now, this is a module. It's not standalone, but it's a way to uh, to model project cash flows over a certain peri number of periods uh, with different methods. One method being manually input. So you manually input this is how much I'm spending in month one versus month two versus month three, and, and you do that manually. The second is straight line. Where, you, where the model takes the total amount for that budget item, divides it by the number of periods that you're going to be spending on that budget item, and then distributes it evenly across that number of periods. And the third, and the whole reason I built this model, was for the S-curve distribution. And uh, how an S-curve works is essentially think about it in terms of hard costs and construction, right? So the first few months of construction, uh, you're going to be ramping up. So you're going to be spending less. But then as construction heats up, you get kind of the middle of, of, of a construction period, that's where you're going to be spending the most. And then as construction begins to wind down, you're going to spend less and less. And so if we graph that, uh, the monthly cash flows look like a normal distribution curve, if you recall from your statistics, statistics courses in college. Or if we graph that on a cumulative basis, it looks like an S tipped over on its side. And so that's what, that's what we're going to do, or that's what this model does for us. I'm going to walk you through how to use it right now. So the first input is your analysis start date. I'm just going to make this January 2016 is our start. The next is the steepness of our S-curve. Okay, so what this does is right now, uh, using a standard deviation in our normal distribution formula, uh, we're getting this sort of curve. Now we can flatten that by choosing a different standard deviation. So I'm going to use moderate here, that's a three, and you'll notice we spend more in the early periods, less in the middle periods. Uh, for this exercise, I'm going to keep it steep, but just so you know, if you want to, you can come into the raw data tab, and you can actually change the standard deviations. The higher it is, uh, the steeper the curve is, the lower it is, the flatter the curve is. Uh, interesting, just to show, if we go to flat, a one, it is almost straight line. Here we look at the normal distribution. I mean, it's it's almost straight line. And so you may have budget line items that are almost straight line, but you want a little bit of S curve to them, and then that in that case you might use the flat. But here we're going to use the steep. So let's look at our budget items again. This is a really simple uh, module, but it, it it illustrates how we do this. So we ha I have four budget items here, and then I have an analysis period that lasts 24 months. I have an air check that when the sum of these, or this line here, uh, of all the periods equals the amount of the budget item, then it outputs OK. If it doesn't sum up, then it'll output in a red font incomplete, and that means there's an error that you need to fix. And I'll show you how that's done here in a second. Uh, the other thing to note is we have a sum line here that's going to sum the cash flows of each budget item. And this is the line you're most likely going to output to your development model uh, as an outflow, right, in your DCF. Uh, or you can use this for a host of other things, if nothing else, just to forecast, uh, to forecast for instance, construction interest. You're going to need to calculate construction in interest on the total amount that's been spent out. And you're going to want to do that in some uh, forecasting model that's more accurate than just simply straight lining it. Okay, so with that, let's go in and I'll walk you through each one. Acquisition, I'm going to say that this costs 610000 to buy, of which 10000 is our due diligence cost. Now, you immediately notice that when I put 610 in, our air check says incomplete. Well, the reason it says incomplete is our cash flow distribution method is set as manual input. What this is saying is we're going to manually input by hand the amount of cash flow that uh, or, or how the cash flow is distributed for the acquisition and we're going to start so the 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 outflow or the cash flow begins in period one and the length of those cash flows are in this case I'm gonna say two and my thinking is period one or month one we're going to spend on due diligence period two or month two is when we're actually going to close and spend the other six hundred thousand now in order to manually input we come and we're gonna open up some hidden columns here. And then I use conditional formatting to uh, change to blue cells the cells that you're going to be uh, 
manipulating here. So we have 610,000 to distribute. We're going to do it manually. 10,000 in month one, 600,000 in month two. When I hit enter here, the air check is going to is going to change to OK. And there we have it. Manually inputted. We're going to close this, those uh, row, uh, columns. Go to hard cost. So our hard, hard cost, 3 million, distributed in an S curve. Now we're going to start in month two. Now we could start this in month one and go for 24 months. And that would be, again, even lay over this. Um, you know, actually, we're going to start in month three. And that's a 22, sorry, 22 uh, month length. And then you'll notice here in the graph, these two graphs are only graphing our hard costs, just so I, could, I can show you how this works. You notice month one and month two, no outflows, and then a normal distribution curve to distribute the three million over these 22 periods, like so. And you can see that here. So that's our hard cost. Soft costs, uh, 250,000. I'm going to up this to 300,000. Oops. This is straight line over 24 periods. I'm actually going to start this in month two for 23 months. Ends in month. It should end in month 24. Now, if I have too many months, this will say incomplete. And the reason is, is it's trying to uh, add, or it has cash flows left over that are happening in month 25. And there is no month 25 in our analysis period. So this needs to be 23. Gives us our OK. And again, this is now the um, this divided by the length, or our budget uh, amount divided by the length, evenly distributed in each period. And then finally, tenant improvements. We're going to spend, I'm going to say 250000 And tenant improvements are coming at the end. So we're going to start, we'll, we'll, we'll build the building, and then we'll fit it out at the end. We're going to start in month 21. This is going to be a four-month fit out. And so then you'll see here, and, and this isn't graph, so we'll come, I'll come over and show you. But it is an S-curve. Month, The first month of tenant improvements, 25000 the middle months, 100,000 each, last month, 25,000. That's, again, our S-curve. And when we sum those up, the air check, if we come out here to the far right, is OK. And that means that uh, the sum of these cash flows equals the sum of our budget items. Now, I also want to show you how to add budget items here. And, and it shouldn't be too difficult, but what we need to understand first is how the uh, uh, the workbook is set up. I have three worksheets or three tabs. Uh, the budget, which is uh, where we're going to input our values and we'll also see the outputs. I have an S-curve tab. This is where the S-curve formula is used uh, and providing uh, the source. Uh, ben Bolock on uh, MrExcel.com is the one who created this formula. Uh, hey there, everyone. Today I'm going to walk you through my development budget cash flow distribution module. And uh, so on, on this tab now. here is calculating this is a module, S not stand alone for each of these but budgets. It's a way now, to, mind, we may not necessarily uh, use to model one item. Project it that cash depends flows on over a certain this number of here. periods. If we, uh, if we choose S curve here, methods, then it's going to come to this tab as manually and input. So you manually input. This is how much I'm spending in month one versus month two. And then our raw data, of course, is our data validation. Second is straight line. And then our S curve distribution. The model takes data, the data total amount for, for that this, budget item, as well as a V divides it by the number of periods that you're going to be spending on the budget here, item, the standard, the standard distribution evenly for, across that number uh, of periods. Of the and the third, and the whole reason I built so this model, to how to add additional lines. You'll notice and that I've lined uh, up the how an S-curve works is essentially to budget items in the hard curve tab as well as the right. so budget tab. The first the few same. months, so, and the reason I did that is uh, you're going to be ramping up. If we so select each less. tab, and to do that, as you construction heats up, uh, click on this tab of, of, of control, click period, the budget, you'll notice now these two are both selected. And then as construction begins to wind down, you're going to spend less and Again, they're still selected. So if we graph that, and I'm going to insert the monthly cash flow, so look like I'll hit normal distribution shift curve, space bar, if you recall from and that selects this entire row. Courses in college. Then I'm going to hit Control or plus. If we graph that on a cumulative that adds a basis. You'll it notice like as soon as I added that, the conditional formatting. I hope and so. That's what the that's conditional what we're formatting. Do, that's what that was does for us to the. I'm going to walk you through how to use it right now. Gets added to this. So the first I'm going to add a budget is your analysis here. start date. Uh, we're going to call this January 20 second here. 16 yep. is our. We're going to call this. Uh, the next is the steepness uh, of our S curve. Okay. So what this does is right now, 
uh, using a standard deviation that. in our uh, normal distribution we're going to say that they're 120,000. Uh, we're getting this we're sort of curve. Now we can uh, flatten that here by choosing these in month two. a different standard go deviation. For three months. So I'm going to use moderate here. Now, that's a three. The issue is none of the formulas more copy in the down. Early so the formatting copy down, down the formulas period. didn't. Uh, Neither on for the this tab exercise, I'm going to steep. But just so you know, if you want to, and, uh, the raw data to some of this here, so you can we, actually change. The so now what we're going to do is we're going to unselect, so we're not uh, selecting the both of these. The curve probably is, the lower it is, the flatter the curve is. It doesn't matter. Uh, uh, interesting, just uh, to we're show. Raw data, we go to flat, just so we can unselect these two tabs. It is we're going to come straight to the budget tab. Here we look at the and let's just copy the formula. I mean, so it's almost straight line. So you may have select budget line items that are it's also almost straight line, but you want a little bit of S curve to them. Or the hidden column. That's right. In that case, you might use the flat. But here we're going to use the steep here. So and let's look at our budget items again. This is a really this simple uh, down module, here, we're pull but down it, one. it illustrates how we do this. So now we the, I have four the problem we have, right, here. is it's incomplete. Well, the reason it's incomplete is it's pulling 24 from this I have line here, here which is empty right that now. when the so sum to fix this, of these or this simple. line here uh, of all the periods equals the amount of the budget item, then it outputs OK. Or we select If it doesn't these, sum up, we do a then it will output in a down. red font incomplete, and that means there's and an error that you need to fix. And I'll show you how that's done there here you in a have second. Uh, a the other thing to note, item. you can do that for sum 10 budget here. line items. Sum the cash flow. If you have any other questions, item. feel free to reach out to me. this is the line me. you're most likely going to uh, output thank you for to your, your time development and, model uh, uh, as an model. outflow, right, in your DCF. Or you can use this for a host of other things, if nothing else, just to forecast uh, to forecast, for instance, construction interest. You're going to need to calculate construction in interest on the total amount that's been spent out, and you're going to want to do that in some uh, forecasting model that's more accurate than just simply straight lining it. Okay, so with that, let's go in and I'll walk you through each one. Acquisition. I'm going to say that this costs six hundred and ten thousand to buy, of which ten thousand is our due diligence cost. Now you immediately notice that when I put six ten in. Our air check says incomplete. Well, the reason it says incomplete is our cash flow distribution method is set as manual input. What this is saying is we're going to manually input by hand the amount of cash flow that, uh, or, or how the cash flow is distributed for the acquisition. And we're going to start, so the, the, the outflow or the cash flow begins in period one. And the length of those cash flows are, in this case, I'm going to say two. And my thinking is, period one or month one, we're going to spend on due diligence. Period two or month two is when we're actually going to close and spend the other 600000 Now, in order to manually input, we come and we're going to open up some hidden columns here. And then I use conditional formatting to uh, change to blue cells the cells that you're going to be uh, manipulating here. So we have 610000 to distribute. We're going to do it manually, 10000 in month one, 600,000 in month two. When I hit enter here, the air check is going to is going to change to OK. And there we have it. Manually inputted. We're going to close this, those uh, row, uh, columns. Go to hard cost. So our hard, hard cost, 3 million, distributed in an S curve. Now we're going to start in month two. Now we could start this in month one. And go for 24 months, and that would be again evenly over this. Um, you know, actually, we're going to start in month three, and that's a 22, sorry, 22 uh, month length. And then you'll notice here in the graph, these two graphs are only graphing our hard costs, just so I, could, I can show you how this works. You notice month one and month two, no outflows, and then a normal distribution curve to distribute the 3 million over these 22 periods, like so. And you can see that here. So that's our hard costs. Soft costs, uh, 250,000. I'm going to up this to 300,000. Oops. This is straight line over 24 periods. I'm actually going to start this in month two for 23 months. Ends in month, it should end in month 24. Now, if I have too many months, this will say incomplete. And the reason is, is it's trying to uh, add, or it has cash flows left over that are happening in month 25. And there is no month 25 in our analysis period. So this needs to be 23. Gives us our OK. And again, this is now the um, this divided by the length, or our budget uh, amount divided by the length 
evenly distributed in each period. And then finally, tenant improvements. We're going to spend, I'm going to say 250,000. And tenant improvements are coming at the end. So we're going to start, we'll, we'll, we'll build the building and then we'll fit it out at the end. We're going to start in month 21. This is going to be a four month fit out. And so then you'll see here, and, and this isn't graph, so we'll come, I'll come over and show you, but it is an S-curve. Month, The first month of tenant improvements, 25,000. The middle months, 100,000 each. Last month, 25,000. That's, again, our S-curve. And when we sum those up, the air check, if we come out here to the far right, is OK. And that means that uh, the sum of these cash flows equals the sum of our budget items. Now, I also want to show you how to add budget items here. And, and it shouldn't be too difficult, but what we need to understand first is how the, uh, uh, the workbook is set up. I have three worksheets, or three tabs. Uh, the budget, which is uh, where we're going to input our values, and we'll also see the outputs. I have an S-curve tab. This is where the S-curve formula is formulas used. Uh, and providing uh, the source. Uh, ben Bolock on uh, MrExcel.com is the one who created this formula. Uh, props, hat, hat off to Ben for that. And uh, so on, on this tab here is calculating the S-curve for each of these budget items. Now keep in mind, we may not necessarily use one item. Uh, that depends on this input here, but if we if we choose S-curve here, then it's going to come to this tab as, and it's going to use this cash flow stream okay and then a raw data of course is our uh, data validation list there and then our s curve distribution both for data data validation list as well as a v lookup that we use when we calculate here the standard deviation for uh, each of these budget line items so to how to add additional lines you'll notice that i've lined up the rows to, to the budget items in the S curve tab as well as the budget tab to be the same. And so, and the reason I did that is if we select each tab, and to do that, you uh, click this tab, hit control, click the budget, and you'll notice now these two are both selected. Let's go to the budget tab. Again, they're still selected. And I'm going to insert a row right here. So I'll hit shift space bar, and that selects this entire row. Then I'm going to hit Control Plus, and that adds a row. You'll notice that as soon as I added that, the conditional formatting, I hope, the conditional formatting that was attached to the above row gets added to this. I'm going to add a budget item here. Uh, we're going to call this, actually, one second here. Yep. We're going to call this, um, uh, how about site costs? Now, they would typically build, be built into our hard costs, but just for this exercise, we'll do that. Uh, we're going to say that they're 120,000. We're going to use uh, an S curve here. We're going to start these in month two. Going to go for three months. Now, the issue is none of the formulas copied down, right? So the formatting copied down, the formulas didn't, neither on the budget tab or the S curve tab. And uh, some of this here. So. So now what we're going to do is we're going to unselect so we're not selecting both of these. And I probably should have done it before I added these, but it doesn't matter at this point in time. Uh, we're going to hit raw data just so we can unselect these two tabs. We're going to come back to the budget tab. And let's just copy the formulas down. So we'll just go ahead over like this, select all of these. It's also selecting the hidden rows, right? Or the hidden columns, I'm sorry. Actually, let's go all the way over to here. And then we're just going to grab this little ellipsis down here, and we're going to pull down one, and that copied it. Now, the, the, the problem we have, right, is it's incomplete. Well, the reason it's incomplete is it's pulling from this line here, which is empty right now. So in order to fix this, it's pretty simple. Uh, we go here. Uh, we copy, or we select all of these. We do a similar thing. We copy on down. And there you have it. We added a budget line item. And you can do that for 10 budget line items if you want. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, thank you for your time. And uh, 
happy modeling.